Greetings, gentlemen. Uh, back to do a kit review by request um, by our favorite crazy Irishman, Shane Smith. Shane, this is for you, buddy. Uh, the man who's insane. Why is Shane insane? Because he's going to paint six millimeter figures. Seriously? I doubt I could paint a six millimeter wide paint line, much less paint a six millimeter figure. <laughs> uh, none, none of that. So, yeah. I'm going to do a uh, complete review of um, this kit, which is a Hasegawa, Hasegawa, as Aaron would say, <laughs> 172nd scale, no less, uh, Junkers, JU-88A4, the Schnell Bomber, meant to be a high-speed bomber, um, fast enough to outrun, outrun rather, uh, Allied fighters, and as, of course, as we know, that uh, was not the case, I think, for pretty much any of the twin-engine German bombers. At least the ones that were propeller driven. Let me uh, let me uh, phrase that. So we have the box. It's not a very big box, although the kit is uh, surprisingly large considering its scale. Um, so uh, you know, just some legal stuff here on the side of the box. Um, another picture of the box art. No surprises there. This side we have a really nice photograph of the finished model giving the um, dimensions of the kit as it's finished. I also want to point out, this is a pretty new kit. Now, I don't know that, I guess, from what Aaron has said, that some of the Hasegawas get reboxed, but this says 2006, and from what I can tell online, it is a relatively new kit. 158 pieces, which is a lot for a 172nd scale kit, and the contents, of course, are... PS and PE polystyrene and photo etch? I don't remember there being any photo etch in here, but I have looked at the kit. So let's uh, let's see what we have on the inside. One bag of sprues, the Unibag, like to call from Hasegawa, and I will be opening this shortly. We have um, the clear parts with some poly caps, and we have the instruction sheet. Some nice looking instruction sheet. And check out the Swazis. And these are pretty nice. Um, they're, they're made in Japan, so these are not cart cartographs. Some maintenance stencils. And check out the decals for the cockpit instrumentation. Nice. I don't have to hand paint those. Yay. <laughs> so it looks like some future uh, is in the works for that. Not sure what those smudgy looking decals are for. One of our more aircraft knowledgeable friends out there can uh, possibly inform me as to the function of these. So, there's the decal sheet. Look nice. The instruction sheet. I'm going to set this box aside. What do we have? Nice black and white photograph of the finished model up the front here um, with a picture of the uh, carrying ordnance on the bottom. Looks nice. For, and then, of course, another one from a bottom-up view of the aircraft. A uh, brief history of the aircraft. And let's see how many steps we have to complete. Only 10 steps. That's a lot of parts to, um, to be only 10 steps. I don't see... Here is a sprue map, by the way, and it's a nice sprue map. I don't see any photo etch call outs there, so I think that box may be wrong. I don't see any photo etch at all. But uh, these parts are numbered on these uh, on this sprue map. Uh, if you guys can see that, uh, they're tiny, tiny numbers, but they are numbered, so that's really nicely done. Uh, the paint call outs um, are all uh, GSI Creos or Gunza Sangyo paints. But it is given the RLM equivalents, which is nice. You might be able to find something uh, in another uh, color from another manufacturer, so which I will use because I have the uh, Viejo RLM color set. So uh, no surprises here. Uh, begins with the construction of the cockpit, and look at the really nice instructions to install the decals. Um, that's really nice. I really like that. Seems to be fairly straightforward construction. There seems to be quite a bit of interior detail. This is going to be nice. No figures are included with this kit, though. I, would, I do want to point that out. So you can go straight into the wings, engine cowling assembly, uh, ordnance, um, 
additional ordnance down here at the bottom. Looks like this will be a relatively quick build, uh, even though um, there's there are excuse me rather you know even though there are quite a few parts. There's the gunners, any aircraft weapons. What we have for painting and marking. Let's take a brief look here. Painting and marking. We have wow a lot of choices. A lot of choices. Um, KG-51 Russia, Oberleutnant Werner Baumbach, I'm not familiar with him, Norway, uh, 1941, KGR-106, uh, some really nice paint gall outs showing the uh, decal placement. I hope I can finish this, my batteries are low, I'm getting the low battery indicator. So, let me move on. Now I'm going to do something I do not normally do, and I'm going to go ahead and open this bag so that we can take a better look at the parts. This is for you, buddy Shane. I was uh, initially kind of daunted by this kit. I thought it was really complex, but based on what I've seen in the instruction sheet, it doesn't appear, sorry for hitting my camera there, to be too bad. One of the uh, propellers has come loose. So, the uh, first sprue is um, really nicely detailed wings and fuselage. So you have mirror halves here. The panel lines are recessed. Very nice. Look at the rivet uh, and fine detail on the wing. I hope me, the camera will focus. There we go. Let's you guys take a look at that. Really excellent detail. Part of the airframe. So, what do we have on the next sprue? Set these aside here, sorry. Quite a few sprues. This is, uh, this could be engine cowling. You guys can see that. Pretty nicely detailed for 172nd scale. I would have to say that I'm fairly impressed. I don't see um, much flash or any flash to speak of. I think we can assume that's where the prop broke loose. I'm assuming that, maybe not. The engine cowling. That looks easy enough to put together. This next sprue, that one's missing a part two. Looks like we have external wing mount for ordnance and exhaust for the engines. Some of these parts I'm not aware of. Maybe gear, landing gear, bay doors. What do you guys think? Pretty nicely detailed. Yeah, here we have additional engine cowling detail. If you guys can see that. Come on, camera, focus. My bad low battery indicator is flashing, so it may not be running on full juice. The prop looks pretty good. Three bladed prop. Uh, once again, the engine exhaust. This is just like the other sprue. It looks like that sprue broke into pieces. Maybe missing some pieces out of it. So here we have uh, this is going to be tail parts, perhaps part of the vertical stabilizers. You guys can see the nicely uh, recessed panel line detail and the rivets. Really pretty nicely done. But I think uh, I think you guys would mostly agree. For the most part, Hasegawa kits are pretty good, especially the newer ones. Of, uh, they're supposed to have uh, good engineering. Now, I don't know of any fit issues. Anyone that's built this kit, you know, let me know if you guys have run into any, run into any fit issues. This has got to be part of the engine assembly here. Got to be part of the engine assembly. Part of the cowlings. Got to be. Here we have ordnance, bombs, 
I know, I'm sorry I don't know how to identify the bombs. I don't know enough about German aircraft from World War II. Of course, uh, landing gear wheels, part of the wheel assembly there. What else do we have? Ah, cockpit. Wow, look at the cockpit details. Look at the instrumentation. Those decals are going to look good on that. There's a sidewall instrumentation. And my f the first flash I have seen, you guys can see that. There's a little bit of flash on that seat, so we have three cockpit seats there. Really nice rivet detail on the side of that um, fuselage piece. I have to say I'm really pretty impressed with the uh, interior detail. Check out the steering yoke. That's nice. That's pretty nice. The detail is pretty good, guys. Hope you see that. Okay. This sprue. A lot of these are mirrored sprues. Um, this has got to be landing gear assembly. Um, this has got to be landing gear bay detail, the other wheel, and then of course more ordnance. Because something is broken off of this. Here are more tail parts, perhaps part of the vertical stabilizers, I'm not sure. Once again, with nice um, recessed line detail, uh, really, really nice looking uh, rudder detail with a you know, pretty, pretty significant looking demarcation line between the two. In fact, there's, you can almost see daylight between that. Looks really nice. This, not sure what this part is. Is this for uh, part of the bomb bay, perhaps? I'm not sure. Somebody who knows aircraft better than me can uh, help me identify that part. We have a nice looking clear part sprue. Uh, the canopies do not look that thick considering the scale. I've heard a lot of guys complain about the really thick canopies in 170 second scale. These look really nicely done. I'm not going to take the, the clear parts out of the bag because I'm concerned about potentially scratching or damaging them. So I'm going to leave them in their protective bag. I hope I hope that's okay. So. All in all, guys, this is a, like a really nice kit. Um, looks like I may be missing a part from uh, this sprue. Hope I don't need it. But um, thanks to you uh, guys for watching this review. I hope you enjoyed it. And Shane, buddy, I hope you enjoyed it. It's a pretty good look at this kit, I think, overall. Uh, anybody who would like to do uh, like me to do any reviews out of any of the kits in my stash, please do so. Uh, I've said that several times now. Simply uh, send me your friend a request through the myhobbyinfo.com website. I'll be glad to share with my info or my info with you. And uh, of course, you can make any request um, on any kit that you would like me to review. Thanks for watching again, guys, and everyone have a nice evening, or at least try to.